Welcome to Special Ops. I'm your host, Jerry McLaughlin. All eyes are on January 6, 2021. I'll explain. This is the path to victory for Donald Trump. We could ignore today's date of December 14th while people are wrangling around. The electoral votes are going back and forth and they're trying to nominate to Joe Biden, uh, you know, based on fraudulent votes. Well, we could further ignore it. Well, I mean, let's let's first face it. Uh, CNN's not going to say this and MSNBC is not going to say this, but here it goes. The electoral vote it's got to be presented to a joint session of the House and Senate. It's not over right now. It doesn't matter what the acceptance speech of Joe Biden's gonna to be tonight, it doesn't matter. The date is January 6th, that's important. Don't let anybody fool you and don't believe the lamestream media that tells you differently. At that time, a Republican Senator, most likely Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, will object to the outcome of the election, rightfully so, because it's fraudulent. That'll set in motion a constitutional crisis, and that's a good thing. Constitutional crisis, our founding fathers said was a good thing every so often, and they said a lot more than just that about how to resolve them. But if the House and the Senate fail to resolve the issues, then the matter will go to a special session of the House. But fear not, this is not a Nancy Pelosi special session. This is not 438 people controlled by Democrats. Ah, this is 50 people, a member from each of the United States of America. By now, you probably know where I'm going with this. Since Republicans control most states, <laughs> I know it's hard to believe based on what you see on television, but it's a slam dunk Donald Trump victory for another four years. How is it possible? If Biden has 307 electoral votes, as it's expected to be counted by this evening, to Donald Trump's 232 votes, how is it possible? Well, that's where the constitutional system enacted by our founding fathers comes in to settle election disputes. It only takes one member of the House and one member of the Senate to object, and it triggers mandatory a special session separately, the Senate and the House, to resolve the differences. Now, of course, you didn't see this in MSNBC, you didn't read it in the Washington Post, I'm sure, but it really only takes two people, peace and love to our founding fathers, just two people to set in motion the very deliberations that gives Donald Trump a second term. Now, it ultimately requires both chambers to deadlock, um, I mean, well, both chambers have to resolve the differences and then it goes to the House. But if we don't have both of them and it's deadlocked on one of them at least, there's another way to resolve the discrepancies. It's seldom used and it's um, a constitutional option. It's called the 12th Amendment of the United States Constitution, which most people nowadays haven't even read. But per the 12th Amendment, the vice president, who currently is Michael Pence, can intervene and settle the dispute. Let me say it again. The Vice President of the United States, per the forward-reaching wisdom of our Founding Fathers in the form of the 12th Amendment, has the absolute right to object to the electoral vote. Remember, this is not mob rule. This is not democracy. This is a republic or a democratic republic. This is where we have electors as a, a safety gap between the mob and the, the Oval Office. Not everybody understands the wisdom of the Electoral College, but it's there for a reason. And boosting his constitutional and moral authority, maybe some Democrat electors who agreed that the election was not free and fair. We'll find out later on tonight on that, but it doesn't matter either way. This is uncharted territory, I have to admit, but that's for us. It wasn't uncharted for our founding fathers who set in motion many checks and balances to avoid ever seeing tyrants take over the United States of America.